This is Wrestling's Greatest Moments. Hey now, wrestling fans. It's time for another episode of Wrestling's Greatest Moments. Hulk Hogan battled in many monumental main events at WrestleMania, but nothing quite like when he stepped into the ring against a wrestler as big and as popular as him. Sit back as Wrestling's Greatest Moments looks at WrestleMania 6, The Ultimate Challenge. 1990 was a time of change for the WWF, as Vince McMahon was looking for Hulk Hogan to pass the torch to a new babyface champion and take a new role in the WWF, that of the Babe Ruth of Wrestling, a timeless favorite who didn't need a title to draw. Hogan seemed to fit the bill as, as he was still popular enough with fans, that he could still draw, he had mainstream marketability, and he was someone who could be used as a special attraction, especially if WWF fans tired of his act. As Bill Hansock observed in the book, we promised you a great main event in unauthorized WWE history. While McMahon was reaping all the benefits of having glommed onto the Hulkster when he did, he recognized that his, his already quite bald golden child would not be around forever. And as Hogan was already beginning to eye a potential career move as a movie actor, it would behoove him to try and find the next big thing while he was already all in on the current big thing. Wrestling fans, like any consumers of entertainment, be it sports, TV, or wrestling, can be fickle, gushing with praise for something one day and looking for something new the next. Keep in mind that this era was at a time when Vince McMahon was at the top of his game, and while his decisions weren't perfect, he had a good idea of what worked and didn't. Thus, when he saw a potential heir to the Hogan throne, he went to work in signing him. Vince McMahon saw big things in his latest acquisition, the Ultimate Warrior. Like so many wrestlers before him, the man who would become known as the Ultimate Warrior had been poached from another territory and brought into the WWF to help Vince McMahon with his twin goals of growing the WWF and crushing the competition. The Ultimate Warrior had been working in Fritz von Erich's World Class Wrestling Association as the Dingo Warrior after a rough start in the grappling game. While the warrior had a phenomenal physique, his wrestling skills were sorely wanting, so much so that he made Hulk Hogan look like Harley Race or Luthez by comparison. However, Vince McMahon didn't want or need a Luthez. He wanted a bigger-than-life showman who could draw a crowd and sell merchandise. McMahon must have seen this when he brought the Ultimate Warrior into the WWF in 1987, protecting him with short squash matches that featured the Warrior running to the ring to his pulse-pounding entrance theme, shaking the ropes like he was undergoing an exorcism and polishing off opponents faster than Iron Mike Tyson disposed of the many hapless chumps who boxed him during his heyday. The Ultimate Warrior made no illusions about his act, once remarking, I gave more in my ring entrance than most people gave in the whole match, and the fans got more out of my ring entrance. If I wasn't blown up and exhausted by the end of the match, I didn't think I gave the people their Ultimate Warrior's money's worth. For the Warrior, it was all about the look and the charisma. Jim Hallway created no illusions about what he saw work for him and how it set him apart from everyone in the wrestling world. There were guys that came to the WWF with bags and bags and bags of wrestling moves, but none of them made it like the Ultimate Warrior character. The charisma is the most important part. If you don't have the charisma, none of the other stuff matters. The charisma is what made the body work. The charisma is what made me go to the gym at 2 o'clock in the morning because that is what I have to do to be the Ultimate Warrior. It quickly paid off as the Warrior was Intercontinental Champion just over a year from his debut. The Warrior dispatched the Honky Tonk Man at the inaugural SummerSlam with all the delicacy of a tactical nuke. Fans loved the Warrior, and while his promos were enough to confound a protocol droid, they added to his mystique. Losses were rare and usually controversial, such as when Rick Rude scored a surprise win for the Intercontinental Championship over the Warrior at WrestleMania 5, with a healthy assist from manager Bobby the Brain Heenan. However, the Ultimate Warrior quickly bounced back, regaining the title at, at 1989 SummerSlam, a blockbuster bout and build-up. Vince McMahon was ready to do something unprecedented, book a Babyface vs. Babyface main event at WrestleMania. Indeed, Babyface vs. Babyface matches were a rarity in the WWF, especially at the main event level. Fans would have to look back to 1972's Showdown at Shea main event for such a similar high-profile main event. There. WWF Champion Pedro Morales battled Bruno San Martino to a time limit draw. 
Would the WWF give the fans a conclusive finish? First, there was a matter of setting up the match. The WWF began at the Royal Rumble when the Ultimate Warrior cut a pre-match promo discussing 28 mortal contestants and two immortals, himself and Hulk Hogan. Hogan's promo was more general, with the Hulkster boasting that despite some tough competition, no one could overcome the power of his 24-inch pythons. The Royal Rumble match proceeded as normal until the Ultimate Warrior entered at number 21, making short work of competitors including Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase and Dino Bravo. Hulk Hogan entered at number 25, beginning the confrontation the Warrior and WWF fans were eager to see. Hogan showed his Royal Rumble credentials as he eliminated several opponents before he turned to confront the Warrior. Both men traded moves with neither moving the other. Finally, a double clothesline floored both of them. The Barbarian entered at number 27, trying to capitalize on the opponents being down. Rick Rude's entrance helped the heels further, and they took turns beating down Hogan. Meanwhile, the Ultimate Warrior rallied and went after the heels while Hogan recovered. In the reminder that it's every man for himself, Hogan clotheslined the Warrior out of the ring. The addition of babyface Hercules and heel Mr. Perfect led to an exciting final five of Rude, Hercules, The Barbarian, Hogan, and Mr. Perfect, but Hulkamania prevailed. While Hogan had triumphed, he had to know what was stronger, Hulkamania or the power of the Ultimate Warrior. Consequently, Hogan issued the Ultimate Challenge, offering to wrestle the Intercontinental Champion at WrestleMania VI. WWF President Jack Tunney confirmed the match, and now fans would see the WWF's two greatest babyfaces battling for supremacy. The WWF built up the match further, with Hogan and Warrior teaming up to take on Mr. Perfect and the Genius during an episode of Saturday Night's main event. A post-match miscommunication led to some fisticuffs, and fans wondered if either Hogan or the Warrior could wait that long. One thing was certain. Both Hogan and the Warrior wanted each other to, to be at their best when they fought at WrestleMania VI. This led to each superstar saving the other from post-match beatdowns and usually increasing the already bubbling heat between each other. Somehow, both champions made it to WrestleMania VI intact, with fans learning that the match would be a winner-take-all competition with Hogan's WWF Championship and the Ultimate Warrior's Intercontinental Championship both on the line. However, the WWF had to deal with two real-world roadblocks on the road to WrestleMania. Lights out for WrestleMania 6? Former Maple Leaf Wrestling promoter Jack Tunney reportedly helped Toronto land WrestleMania 6. This would be the first time an international venue hosted WrestleMania, and it was a big deal. Toronto had long been a strong wrestling city, and hosting a mania reinforced this notion. However, two behind-the-scenes scenarios could have derailed WrestleMania 6. The first was a local matter that no one in the WWF was even aware of, other than former WWF TV producer Nelson Swegler. According to a 2018 Voice article by Corey Erdman, in early 1990, Ontario Hydro was in the midst of a labor dispute which seriously threatened a power strike in the province. The Canadian Union of Public Employees was asking for wage increases of 11.6 and 9.5% over two years along with an improved pension. The negotiations came to a head the week of WrestleMania 6. Canadians were warned to prepare for a blackout or brownout, a situation which would have KO'd WrestleMania 6. Unfortunately, there was nothing that could be done to salvage a show. Although the idea of getting backup generators seemed like an option, it wasn't feasible according to Swegler. We probably had standby generators for production trucks, but it wasn't practical enough to have enough standby power to just continue the show if the power would have failed, because the billing itself would have asked the audience to leave. Fortunately, everything worked out and there was no power problem during WrestleMania. While the WWF avoided this problem entirely by chance, it had to deal with a tangible problem going into the event, a problem that eventually led to trouble for Jack Tunney. Eddie, Frank Tunney's son, nearly scuppered the whole deal. Jack and Eddie didn't get on, and Eddie felt pushed out when Jack started working with Vince so sued both Jack and Titan Sports. In an attempt to torpedo the Super Show, Eddie even trademarked the name WrestleMania in Canada, which Vince had to then buy from him at an inflated price, much to his chagrin. McMahon reportedly blamed Jack Tunney for the mess, and didn't forget it when he later made the call to cut Tunney from the WWF. However, 
that would be several years down the road. WrestleMania 6 saw several milestones besides the Babyface vs. Babyface main event and the show being held in Canada. 1990 Showcase of the Immortals featured Andre the Giant's last televised WWF match, Jesse the Body Ventura's last appearance as a color commentator at WrestleMania, and Mr. Perfect's first TV loss. Here, Brutus Beefcake would pin him. A legendary night. Hogan and the Ultimate Warriors pre-match promo set the stage for their Babyface vs. Babyface meeting. The Hulkster told Mean Gene Okerlund that this was the Ultimate Warriors chance to embrace Hulkamania and that he and his Hulkamaniacs could save him, turning the darkness into the light and saving the little warriors with the training, the prayers, and the vitamins. Perhaps preparing his fans for his upcoming loss. Hogan told Mean Gene that tonight he would show his Hulkamaniacs that it's not whether you win or you lose, but what kind of winner you are and what kind of loser you are. As good as Hogan's promo was, the Warrior cut arguably the greatest promo of his career after dispensing with mere mortal interviewer Sean Mooney, the Intercontinental Champion clarified that his was an omission of destruction. No, the Warrior wouldn't destroy Hulkamaniacs and Hulkamania, but unify both Hulkamaniacs and Warriors combining their strengths to overcome any obstacle. Indeed, the warrior proclaimed that when Hogan looked into his eye, he would realize that the warrior wasn't there to harm, but to take what both of them believe in and take it to places it had never been. Both promos were fantastic, and all the more so considering they praised their opponents without giving fans any reason to boo the eventual winner or loser. However, could Hogan and the warrior deliver an entertaining match in light of their well-known shortcuts in the ring and how the WWF protected both men. Expectations were low for some fans and critics. Regrettably, WrestleMania 6's undercard was weak, and a weak main event would have made this one of the worst WrestleManias in the pay-per-view six-year history. Thankfully, Pat Patterson, Hulk Hogan, and the Ultimate Warrior had no intention of disappointing the fans, management, or themselves. Pat diligently designed a match to play to both wrestlers' strengths, and according to several accounts, the two wrestlers repeatedly rehearsed the match. The result was a near 20-minute classic that featured a true seesaw battle between the WWF's top babyfaces. Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior put on the performance of a lifetime as they traded holds, relied on their usual array of power moves, and desperately sought to land the coup de grace that would win the match. There was the requisite referee bump that called into question whether the match could have ended earlier. Both Hogan and the Warrior had their opponent down for a three count, arguably longer, while the referee was KO. However, it was a moot point. Finally, as he did so many times before, Hogan rallied and hulked up after the Warrior's finisher. The WWF champion bounced off the ropes and delivered his leg drop of doom. The only problem was that there was nobody home. The Warrior capitalized and landed a big splash, covering Hogan for the 1-2-3 and a historic win. The Ultimate Warrior was now WWF Champion and Intercontinental Champion, a first for any WWF superstar. While Hogan was shocked and apparently sad by his loss, he did the right thing and returned to the ring, handing the WWF Championship over to the Ultimate Warrior, thus symbolically passing the torch. The match was physically draining, and according to Pat Patterson, emotionally draining for the Ultimate Warrior. In his memoir accepted, Patterson recalls, after the show, we actually could not find Ultimate Warrior. There are different dressing rooms everywhere in that building, and no one could figure out where the hell he was. We were screaming our lungs out looking for him. Finally, we opened the door that we figured was probably a broom closet or something. He was in there, sitting by himself in the dark, crying with the championship on his lap. Are you okay? I asked. Pat, I can't believe how you guys took care of me. Hogan vs. Warrior was an emotional night for Patterson, too. He had invested time with both wrestlers in working out their match and was proud of what he saw. I had been crying earlier myself in the crowd with Vince, watching Ultimate Warriors match against Hogan as our vision came to life. Sadly, the Ultimate Warriors title win turned into an anticlimactic title reign, with Vince McMahon going back to his Golden Goose Hulk Hogan and putting the belt back on the Hulkster at WrestleMania 7. Regardless of how the Warriors WWF Championship reign panned out, Hulk Hogan vs. The Ultimate Warrior was one of the greatest matches of both men's careers. Not only did they manage to pull off a babyface vs. babyface bout without alienating the fans, but they wrestled a 20-minute classic 
that still holds up today. Do you remember the Ultimate Challenge? Share your thoughts in the comment section and let us know if there's any videos you'd like Wrestling's Greatest Moments to cover. In the meantime, subscribe to our channel, follow us on X and Instagram, and spread the good news about Wrestling's Greatest Moments, the channel that celebrates the squared circle.